All right, so this is pretty crazy to think about, but we are only two rounds away from finishing up grading the Avenger. For those who haven't been watching, we've been reviewing every core series Avengers comic that's ever existed here on Comic Island. I'll include the link to our full playlist of this series in the video description. And be sure to subscribe to Comic Island so you can join the inevitable flame war when the final episode of Grading the Avengers comes out. And without any further ado, let's begin with round 22. Things in last round for the all new, all different era of Avengers was rough to say the least. The series had a lot of problems and after just a year, it was cancelled. However, rather than give up on Wade entirely, perhaps knowing, as I suspected, that a lot of problems with last round's Avengers had more to do with Marvel than writer Mark Wade, the now beleaguered and widely criticized writer was given another chance to write the series for the year of 2017. So Mark Wade revamped the team with a new artist, Mike Del Mundo, some guest talent along the way, and a new roster with the Avengers experiencing a vast improvement as a result. And it's a good thing that Marvel gave him this second chance, because Wade revamped the whole Avengers team with a new artist, Mike Del Mondo, some guest talent, and a new roster, with almost overnight the Avengers experiencing a vast improvement. Wade kept on Thor, Vision, and Captain America, but booted off everybody else, adding instead the Peter Parker Spider-Man, Nadia Van Dyne, who had been flirting with joining the team the year before anyways, and longtime Avenger Hercules. And just like last round, right out of the gate, the choice of who's on the team to begin with says so much, and in this case, in a very positive way. The Avengers of 2017, or Avengers Volume 7, feels like a much more polished roster. You have some of the new characters Marvel was focusing on post-Secret Wars, like Sam Wilson or the female Thor returning, but instead of a roster composed entirely of these new characters, Vision, Peter Parker, and Hercules are all there to provide their experience, expertise, and Avengers credibility. Hercules' history with the team and his big personality adds so much to the Avengers in a positive way and allows for Thor to more assume a somber leadership role that feels much more appropriate for her character as she's been established in her own books than the way she was written for Avengers Volume 6. Nadia is a newcomer and one of those young up-and-coming heroes, just like how Kamala, Miles, and Sam were in the all-new, all-different Avengers, but this time because there's only one of her, it doesn't feel like the team is in way over their heads. Instead, she's a welcome presence, a fun addition, rather than one randomly tacked on to a couple of Volume 6 issues, where she felt far more like a distraction or intrusion. The weakest character in the whole team is actually Spider-Man. I think the way Peter Parker gets written in Avengers comics too often opts for a more annoying character, rather than the fun and charming iteration of Spider-Man we better know from his solo comics. Outside of the new Avengers back in the early 2000s, Spider-Man in Avengers books is generally a source of tacky jokes and obnoxious behavior. Unfortunately, Avengers 2017 is a pretty solid example of that. At this point in Peter's history as a character, he is CEO of Parker Industries, a big Stark-like company that Dan Slott was pushing for with the Amazing Spider-Man comics. That's used in an interesting way here for the Avengers, where Peter Parker, much like Tony Stark has done at various times, played host to the Avengers using his corporate headquarters. The idea of it, in principle, is fun, but in execution, Parker just comes off as being a little bit snobby, both inside and out of his Spider-Man costume. For whatever reason, the near-identical dynamics used on Tony Stark work for a character like Iron Man, but feel very off-putting and strange for a character like Spider-Man. Maybe it's because we just know Peter is not like this, and he's a lot warmer and open of a person than Tony ever was. So a lot of Peter's behavior in these Avengers books rings false, or worse, makes him feel like a nuisance. That being said, he's just one member of the team. Everyone else is pretty on point, and I don't want to overstate how badly Peter Parker is written. 
because when you compare how Wade wrote the rest of the Avengers in Volume 6, Parker is still much better. Even the worst character in Avengers Volume 7, which would definitely be Peter Parker out of these Avengers, and you know, he might not be great in this series, it, it still doesn't compare to the all new, all different Avengers, where his characters were written in such an aggressively bad way. I feel an incentive to, if anything, downplay the problems I'm talking about in terms of how Spider-Man is written in the Avengers of 2017, because there's a lot of amazing features to this run worth talking about. Mike Del Mundo is so good, and these books are bolstered with fun additional talent, which is especially prominent in all the side issues that are published with the Avengers. These side comics take a couple of forms. First, they include the event tie-in for Monsters Unleashed, which Marvel published as a side thing so that the tie-in felt less like a distraction for the main series, and more of this fun, optional side thing you can skip right by if you so desire. That was a great choice, but also there's this really fun flashback series of stories that take place and take us back to the days when the original Avengers quit and Captain America had to start all over with a new team of former villains. It's really fun that we go back to this classic point in Avengers history. Not only does Mark Waid feel at home with this flashback type content, but it feels pretty welcome in general. Very rarely in Avengers history do we go back to earlier moments in the team. But in the Avengers 2017, it shows us thoroughly why it might be a good idea to do so more in the future. A bunch of artists, including the notable talent of Mark Bagley, do this amazing job at making the classic Avengers era come to life in this story. While it fills in some of the details of a time period in Avengers history where additional content and development makes a lot of sense. These books address some of the transition between the original Avengers and the second team, which Stan Lee just kind of blew right by in his original usual breakneck pace back in the Silver Age. So it really works well at adding something to the story of the Avengers that truly wasn't there before. As for the Avengers of the present, it seems very clear to me that from the beginning, Marvel knew Jason Aaron would be taking over the Avengers for Volume 8, with some very big changes to come along with it. So Mark Wade seemed to have been given a lot of space to tell whatever stories he felt like, as long as he could contain them within 2017. So because he knew he only had one year to tell a story, and he could kind of pre-plan everything, Wade was able to fit a lot into that year. With a firm end date, it feels like he spent a lot of time budgeting his time well compared to the all-new, all-different Avengers, or indeed, most modern Avengers writers. And because of that, we get content in Volume 7 that feels concise, clear, and packed full of Avengers. In one short series of comics, we get the modern Avengers going up against Doom, various iterations of Kang the Conqueror, monsters, and then things kind of fizzle out with Secret Empire. It's a bit of a letdown, as Marvel does keep its tie-in as part of the series for this event, and it feels like it causes the Avengers series to just sort of piddle out into nothing. But at its core, this is a series that looks good, has far more polished character work, and really worked at showcasing how Mark Wade can be a fun Avengers writer. To that end, even as Jason Aaron took over the main series, Wade remains a pretty consistent Avengers presence, and a fairly welcome one at that. Through side stories like Avengers, Worlds Collide, or No Surrender, Mark Wade's ideas and vision of the Avengers would continue on long past 2017. We are more or less folding those additional comics and stories into this review. They feel consistent in terms of art and quality, Alex Ross continues to paint a lot of those covers for example, and most importantly, they continue the spirit and values of his Avengers run from 2017. Which to be honest, is great. For those that aren't a fan of Jason Aaron and his latest take on the Avengers, Wade's presence serves as a nice way to keep Avengers books that feel a little more like the classic team. Aaron's Avengers are all about these changes and big ideas, which we'll be talking about next round, while Wade feels more like what the Avengers have been more historically. Now last round I talked about how Wade kind of felt like a data choice for the Avengers, but when we do it like this, and when we have a new writer who's kind of breaking new ground and taking the team in a different direction, suddenly Wade as a more classic writer who 
keeps the Avengers pulled back towards their roots feels very welcome indeed. Aside from some dud moments here and there with Spider-Man and the end of the 2017 original series, this is a fun read. It's a huge moment of reprieve for Mark Waid after getting two of the lowest grades in all of grading the Avengers. It is very nice that this talented writer with a long history in the comic book industry and after decades of being dicked around by Marvel when it comes to the Avengers comics, finally got a chance to write a proper series of books for this team. Though not perfect, Avengers 2017 is so much better than Wade's history with the Avengers. This run of comics is an example of fine work by Wade, Del Mundo, and the others involved with Avengers. After the disaster of 2016, this creative team, including Wade, who is largely responsible for that disaster, managed to give the Avengers a new and much needed breath of life and boost of energy. I imagine a lot of people completely missed this run due to its short publication time and everyone having a really deserving bad taste in their mouth from the all new, all different Avengers nonsense. But I would recommend people maybe set aside their expectations and thoughts about Avengers 2016 to give Avengers 2017 a solid chance. I had so much fun with these comics and think other people would too. It represented a huge step in the right direction for the Avengers, and serves as final, undeniable proof that Mark Wade can, in fact, write a proper Avengers story when given the opportunity. Next up, the finale. I mean, it's going to be big and epic because we're going to be talking about Jason Aaron, and the amount of opinions I've heard about Jason Aaron as grading the Avengers has rolled out is pretty insane. I really am curious what people are going to say in reaction to my review. And when I was saying I expect a bit of a flame war, uh, well, you'll have to stay tuned for that video next time on Comic Island. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you then. Oh boy. <laughs>